Ah, the mortar. A weapon that even after 18 years of playing this game, I still find to be as complex as the very first day that I tried it out. So how do you use it? Is it effective? And why does it win the award for being the most complicated weapon in the game? Well, I've talked about this weapon in previous videos, but only in kind of little snippets and sections. But before we get into the science of it, I want to quickly look at a good comparison to this weapon, something that is indeed much simpler. Bazooka! The power gauge that is used for the bazooka and pretty much every other shell and grenade based weapon in the game is easy to understand. The longer the button is held down, the further the explosive is going to travel. It's best to label the lowest point on the gauge as 0% and the highest point as 100% power. Then all that's left is for the player to estimate how much power is needed in order to produce the maximum amount of damage on the enemy target. As with most things in the game, the more you practice, the more you're gonna be able to understand the game mechanics of how the power gauge works, how far you're able to launch and throw certain weapons, and overall improve your game sense and muscle memory. As I mentioned as well in previous videos, the bazooka allows for free form aiming, so the player is able to increase or decrease the trajectory of their shot without any restrictions, which is pretty cool, because it ensures that regardless of the player's position, they will always be able to get a shot away. Meanwhile, the mortar, well, it kind of does everything backwards. Unlike the bazooka, which keeps its power gauge and trajectory angle separate, the mortar combines the two. So when a player is aiming at a target, they need to understand that the angle equals X amount of distance. However, the issue here is that the amount of power is already predetermined, as every shot with the mortar produces the same amount of power given, hence there being no power bar. Instead, it's up to the player to work out what the angle is and what is needed in order to reach the target. So, like I said, the gauge is backwards, with the lowest point given being 100% distance and the highest point given being zero, which would cause the shell when launched to go straight up in the air and come straight back down on your pig's head. Each point on the gauge represents 10%. In short, angle equals distance. Okay, so let's say I had a pig that was a few feet in front of me. I would then go ahead and roughly aim between 5 and 10% trajectory, although that you'll find that using a mortar within close proximity whilst being out in the open is a bad move, as you kind of risk damaging yourself in the process. Alright, well what if I want to hit someone that's on the other side of the map? Well that's where you aim using the lowest point on the gauge between 95 and 100% trajectory, but the main issue with 100% is that you could only really use it when nothing is blocking the flight of the shell, which I know is a prominent thing with pretty much every shell based item in the game, but because you have the combination of a set amount of power and the angle determining the distance it will travel, it can sometimes be easier to just use the bazooka rather than risking messing up your shot and dealing no damage at all. It's a shame that there's no training area in Hogs of War for players to just tinker around with different weapons and really get to grips with certain game mechanics. Yeah sure there's the boot camp level before the start of the campaign, but that only shows you the simple stuff like the bazooka. So once you've gotten over the weird aiming system for the mortar, you'll be looking to dish out some decent damage numbers. If you're able to land the shells of the mortar directly onto the heads of enemy pigs, the base damage will be 50 HP. And the main shell will then break off into three more shells that individually do 20 damage each. That's pretty neat because it ensures that even if the initial shell doesn't do its fullest amount of damage, you're able to regain it through the breaking off of the other shells. This weapon is particularly effective against medium health vehicles such as pillboxes, as well as combining nicely with environmental areas. It's always a great feeling when you know that your shot is going to hit directly where you want it, and then suddenly the airship gets in the way and fucks it all up. For new players, the mortar can be very confusing. It takes a lot of trial and error to really get used to its mechanics, but over time you'll eventually adapt to how it works and when it is most effective. A large percentage of this really does come down to muscle memory, as you'll be able to read the situation better and know if you'll get the most out of the weapon at any given time. Biggest piece of advice I can give you? Use the minimap. That's what it's there for, especially when you're aiming at targets that are not in sight of your character. So just remember, the higher you point that thing, the less distance it's going to travel. I need to stop doing these really cheesy endings. <laughs> Overall though guys, that's pretty much going to wrap everything up. I hope you enjoyed the video and indeed learned something along the way. Um, I do intend to shift my focus more onto uh, weapons and stuff in the future, but at the moment I've got like a million and one different things to talk about and make videos on regarding Hogs of War. So do stay tuned and in the meantime I will catch you guys later for the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.